Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And to those of you who have never visited my channel before, my name is Karen Dewey, and I've been sharing my brain retraining, renewing the mind journey with you. Um, I have not been making too many videos lately. I was very consistent for a little over a year and now I'm, I think I'm coming up on maybe 18 months or so since I did DNRS, which is a brain retraining program. Um, just to give a little bit of a background for those of you who haven't um, watched my videos before. So I did DNRS for about a year, very faithfully with, um, you know, following all the directions, doing the um, visualizations every day and and doing all the different steps that they told me to do. And it was a very good experience and I did see improvements um, over time. Um, if I had to guess at a percentage of how much better I got while I was doing the brain retraining, I'd say maybe about 25% or so. Some of the things that um, that I saw improvement in right away were things like my emotions. Mostly when I did the visualizations, um, when I started brain retraining, I was, I was depressed and anxious. Um, I had just recently had a um, spinal fracture due to osteoporosis and I was in a very bad place. Um, but I, I noticed that my mood got better right away and I, I felt like I had more joy um, and I felt more confident in my life. So besides that, I also noticed that my blood sugar was better because I had hypoglycemia for many, many years. I used to have to eat before bed and eat during the night and all that just to keep my blood sugar steady. And... Um, I noticed that my blood sugar improved a great deal while I was doing brain retraining and it's still better to this day. Um, some other things were things like um, I wasn't as sensitive to smells anymore um, and that was through uh, testing myself and pushing myself past the fear and um, I'm trying to think now the different terms that are even used in brain retraining because I haven't really done it in so long, but, um, you know, pushing the boundaries a little bit. I can't remember. Oh, incremental training, you know, just doing things that scared me, testing foods, things like that. Um, so the brain retraining did help me in um, having more confidence and courage to test foods that I hadn't tested in a long time you know, trying, trying new foods and things like that. And so now I, I haven't been doing actual brain retraining for many, many months. I've been doing some other things. Um, and I was doing somatic tracking too for a while. Um, but at this stage, I am not doing a lot of that. It's more just trying to live my life trust God because I'm a Christian and I'm trying to um, allow him to guide me and direct me and help me to renew my mind to see what kind of lies I'm believing to learn to trust him and to not feel like I have to do it all myself that I don't have to be the one that's constantly working and fighting and struggling to get well but learning to trust him that he's He's the one who heals me. He's the one who took care of that on the cross. He forgave my sins. He healed my diseases. And so now it's more, I'm kind of more in that, in that mode, just renewing my mind and learning, like, what am I still believing? That's, that's a lie that is keeping me, um, imprisoned, you know, um, I do eat more foods now. I've expanded my comfort zone because I'm definitely not eating freely, but I go to restaurants now. I, I do eat a lot of things that I wasn't eating before, but still not completely. I still do have anxiety um, connected to certain foods and stuff, but 
it's that's way better than it was before um so in the place that i am now unfortunately in the last several videos that i've made they haven't been very positive because i've been really going through a lot of stuff in my own life i'd say in the past um about six months um, I had been doing really well and I felt like I had come a long way with the brain retraining and um, then some things started happening where um, I tore some muscles in my rib cage that were very very painful and it brought a lot of fear and anxiety back and it was very traumatic and um, it caused me to start using avoidance behaviors again as far as like how I could lay down in bed, how I can move my body, things like that. And most of you know that avoidance behaviors are not something that we want to practice because then we're telling our brains, don't do that, it's dangerous. So um, avoidance behaviors are not good, but you know, sometimes that happens. Like if we have something going on in our life, that a physical issue or whatever, um, we start to avoid things again. So that's kind of where it started. And I started having problems from that point. It took me a while to heal from that. And then um, I noticed a couple of months ago that I started having some joint pain in my hands. And I actually have grown some little bumps in some joints. Um, I also, right now, I have a frozen shoulder. And I've been dealing with that for about a month and I am getting some physical therapy and I'm having some issues with my lower back. Now with all of these things, it's hard to know, is it somatic or is it structural? And probably most of you have struggled with that very question because if you've done any somatic tracking or anything um, or, the, or the limbic impairment stuff, Sometimes we just don't know. You know, we get diagnosed with things like, you know, SIBO and Candida and, you know, ruptured discs and things like that. And so we think it's structural, but then we, we learn those things can actually be somatic. Even things like a ruptured disc. I mean, they have found that people with no pain at all have ruptured discs on, on an MRI or a CAT scan. And yet there's people in excruciating pain from it, you know, or gut issues. People have been diagnosed with all kinds of gut issues. And in brain retraining, once you heal the brain and, you know, retrain the brain and stuff, people don't really have those things. Those were just symptoms that you were getting or whatever. So it's sometimes it's really hard to determine. And that's kind of where I am. Like I'm being treated for a frozen, frozen shoulder but I'm wondering, is it coming from my brain? You know, is that related to what I had going on in my side that I started to avoid certain movements and stuff in my shoulder? My brain told this area not to move as much? I don't know. And that's one of the things that's frustrating. And even with what's going on with my back, I've had a lot of stressful things going on in my life. Um, my husband's health issues and and just a lot of stuff that's been kind of traumatic and overwhelming. And, you know, now I'm having all these physical problems that I did not have before. So I'm questioning, are they limbic? Are they somatic or are they structural? But either way, they're real. Because even if something is limbic or somatic, it's still painful. It can still be debilitating. It's real because it's coming from the brain the same way um, real or structural pain comes from the brain. So either way, you're having pain, you're having discomfort or whatever. So it's been really rough lately and that's why I haven't been making as many videos because I hate getting on here and telling you bad things because I want to encourage you. But the thing is... I started the channel to share my journey and the first part of my journey was probably a lot more encouraging because I was learning about brain retraining and how it works and I was seeing improvement and you know I was getting better and now the last six months it's been more my struggle and where I am now but 
I also understand from talking to other people and reading other people's comments in Facebook groups or whatever, um, that a lot of people struggle on this journey. You know, some people I think can go through a program and boom, they're fine, they're better, they're great. Other people, it's very slow going, it's difficult, um, it's up and down, and some people don't finish and go back to researching and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I haven't given up. I am still, I do still fully understand that the brain is hugely involved, um, whether it's somatic or structural, the brain is still involved. We still need to get our prefrontal cortex on board, which is the conscious mind, because it's the subconscious mind that is running the show. So um, I'm still in the game. I want to get well. I want to be fully well, 100% well. I don't want to be 25%. I don't want to be 50%. I don't want to be 75%. I want to be 100% well. I want to be whole. I want to have joy and peace. Um, and yeah, but most of you on this journey understand that it's difficult. It's not always easy. And as much as we want to always speak positively and we should, we should, um, we're not supposed to talk a lot about symptoms. We're supposed to, um, you know, rise above the symptoms and, um, make sure that our, our speech is positive and uplifting and we're supposed to fake it until we make it to train our brains to find joy and to make new connections and, and create neuropathways ultimately. But that's hard to do and um, maybe some people do it better than others but the reality is that um, it's not always easy. So I think it's important that we allow ourselves throughout to sometimes be gentle with ourselves and loving towards ourselves because a lot of us come from a place of self-hatred and being hard on ourselves and not really taking care of ourselves. So um, I tend to be that way. So I have to give myself permission to freak out once in a while and mess up, not do it perfectly and to just allow myself to learn and to grow. So wherever you are in your journey, don't give up and allow yourself to just be human. And if you're in a bad place, you know, let, let yourself feel that, I guess, and feel hurt and, and be um, aware of your emotions and stuff, but then just try not to get stuck there. And I often will look up videos and stuff that are encouraging, or I'll read the Bible, um, things like that to encourage myself after I have my little pity party. So, um, you know, we're all different. We all take different paths, but ultimately we want to be whole and we want to feel good and we want to get back into life and have some joy again and peace and um, it's not always a six month program that gets us there. You know, we've lived a lot of years with brokenness and with bad habits and wrong thinking. And, um, it doesn't always get better doing a six month program. Sometimes it takes longer. I know it, it is for me. So thanks for watching and try to stay encouraged and and keep loving yourself and taking care of yourself and don't beat yourself up. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.